Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you're calling in from around the world. My name is Sandy Hart, and I am a fellow partner and also uh, a city organizer. I've organized a number of cities, and I happen to also be the director of the women and girls sector of the Charter for Compassion. I welcome you to V2020, um, a program of the Charter for Compassion, along with um, your fellow partner and also regional director of women and girls, Joan Marie, who is also a, um, um, a, a the regional director of women and girls in the Sacramento area and the producer and your host, um, who I will be introducing you to in just a couple of minutes. Um, and then we'll hear from all of you. That's why we're here today. But first, some housekeeping. If you were to take your cursor, if you're calling in, of course, from your computer, and you take your cursor to the bottom of your screen, you'll notice a um, hand raise. Um, oh, here's Joan joining us right now. Thank you. We've had a little technical difficulty. So in the spirit of, of compassion, we are really happy to welcome you all to this call. And, and we're just in the middle of some housekeeping right now, Joan. And so um, I'm just instructing everybody to get acquainted with their uh, technology. And at the bottom of the screen, they should see a hand raise button. And if they don't, they'll see a chat window. Um, and I'd like everybody to just uh, get comfortable with that chat window and take a moment right now and say hi from wherever you're calling in from around the world. So hi from Helsinki or hi from uh, Alaska, wherever you're calling in from, um, go ahead and, um, and let us know. And then if you're a partner, um, drop in your website. And so we get to see exactly where you're calling from, not just who you're representing and where you're calling from. And um, this call is being recorded and you will get not only a copy of the recording, but a copy of that chat so everybody can see where everybody's at and from. Um, and this is how we um, operate here at the Charter for Compassion through this global thriving network. And for those of you who don't know, the Charter is a network that is, uh, comprised of about 405 cities of compassion with uh, more than 2,000 partners organized into 12 sectors uh, in 52 countries. The Charter Women and Girls sector is the, the newest sector. We are um, just two years old, but we've been growing swiftly and exponentially all through the values of feminine leadership which includes our ambassador program. And so if you are an ambassador, you um, experience shared leadership with us before. Most all of our wonderful ideas come out of our um, ambassador um, heart and mind. Um, we'll be officially announcing our next gen task force also, which we and women and girls are birthing, but we are growing it to uh, take off on its own, um, to be its own sector one day very soon. So if you're interested in that, let us know. Um, the, the V2020 series um, was dreamt about for many years um, out of the heart and the mind of Joan. And when she joined us as an ambassador, um, I guess she found us as a fertile place to plant this idea and is now manifesting it um, here. And you're all a part of it. So welcome. Um, and I'm just going to take a second because I know Joan is here to share with you. And then we, again, we want to hear from you. But I, I just want to share that this series um, initiative is to des is designed to elevate um, the voices of women and girls through the understanding of our personal responsibility and self advocacy, and as the, in, as the description in our website um, suggests, it's necessary that we look back on what we've learned from our past with clear intentions for moving forward for a more compassionate and equitable future together. Um, this concept um, um, of um, through personal responsibility and self-advocacy is actually part of one of our partners initiatives sustainable uh, SDG 18 the unofficial sustainable development goal which you um, can actually read more about um, on SDG 18.com and again we'll send out more information about that um, or maybe as a partner um, that you'll hear more about that um, later in the call after we've heard from all of you. So thanks to everybody for dropping in. Good morning from the Netherlands and West Haven, North Carolina, uh, California, Cambria, wow, Virginia, um, 
This is beautiful Reno, the Netherlands, Toronto, Canada. Sarah, hi Sarah. Everybody, we're so happy that you're with us today. Just keep dropping in your your hellos and say hi to your fellow partners. Um, we're here to hear about all of your work. And uh, but first, let me turn the call over to uh, be led by your fearless um, regional director and um, shared leader. Um, Joan, and then she might also tell you what we're using this for today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Sandy, and good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. How exciting. Everybody's from all over. I love it. Um, I, I want to uh, expand a little bit more on what Sandy had said about um, what V2020 is, and um, that we've created a, a platform aimed towards the year 2020 and um our souls have been kind of stirring and telling us that 2020 is going to be a significant year and it marks the 100th anniversary of the 19th amendment in the united states which gave women the right to vote and also the 150th anniversary of the mother's day peace proclamation which called women of all nationalities 150 years ago to gather and talk of the greater needs of peace, which I feel is um, very prevalent right now. Um, we also will talk later about um, what Sandy mentioned about the SDG um, 18th Sustainable Goal. And um, what, what I'm really excited about is that um, when we understand moments in our history where the sacred has been made profane, then we as women can start these conversations that restore ancient teachings and elevate our wisdom, creativity, and empower our glorious disruptive nature, as Sandy says. <laughs> mm -hmm. So together, we can midwife a new paradigm that comes from our wombs and through our voices. We can support each other in amplifying the majesty of our souls so we wake up, light up, and rise. So um, normally I have um, one or more special guests, but everyone calling in today is my special guest. So I'm so glad that you've taken the time to do this. And we can't wait to hear what each of you are doing and, and, uh, and what's happening in your area. So we'll start the conversation and, and Sandy has her Tibetan bowl. And just to make sure we have um, time for everyone and to respect everyone's time, we are going to continue through to 930, just so you know. Um, but everyone's gonna have three minutes to, um, to to be able to speak about what what you're doing what you're passionate about and um when it gets close to that time sandy will ring the bell and give you a few moments to finish up so we can just kind of cover as much as we can in this time we're really trying to figure out how we can really gather and um build our forces one of my favorite things i organized um for five years, the uh, United Nations International Day of Peace here locally in Carmichael, California by Sacramento. And um, Martin Luther King said, people who love peace need to learn how to organize as effectively as those who love war. And so I feel like that's such a, a guiding statement right now for us about um, how we can really utilize the wisdom of what each of you are doing and build upon that so we keep thinking locally and, and figuring out how to act effectively um, locally. So. With that said, if you would write down um, on the uh, chat, if you um, want to speak, that would be really helpful. Um, or maybe raise your hand. You can also raise your hand. Oh, okay. And also, I don't, if, can I just drop in for a second? Yes. Um, I'm please. looking at our, at our attendees, and we're not all women, so I know that there was some statement that we as women, but um, we as the Divine Feminine, I know that that's really important to you. I just wanted to clarify that because we have yes. someone with us today and that's very Absolutely. Important. The Divine Feminine within us and also um, the men who love women. So we, we need both. We need to balance the masculine and feminine within ourselves, whatever gender we identify as, and, um, and also coming together. So 
So thank you for clarifying that, Sandy. Yeah, you can raise your hand, by the way, if you would like to talk. That might be the best way to go about it. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. um, um, we do have some and beautiful... Yeah, it's, it's really exciting. In Toronto, many of us will be going to the uh, Toronto, um, the Parliament of World Religions in November this year. So we're excited. I hope um, these people that are signing in are going to be there so I get to meet them in person. Um, but let, let's, let's just take a breath so we join together in breath in this moment. And Sandy, if you'd ring the bell, then we can breathe into that. Let's take one more breath, inhaling and exhaling. Thank you. Who would like to start? Yeah, raise your hand, don't be shy, or I'm just gonna call on you and bring you up as a, um, as a, uh, um, as a panelist, and I think I just might start with, um, and I'm going to put you on the spot and be prepared to be on camera um, mm -hmm. or allowed to talk. Um, mm -hmm. I would love to hear from um, Cynthia LeGru, um, if that's okay with Cynthia. I'm going to put you on the spot here, Cynthia. So go ahead and turn off your camera if you don't want to be on the camera. You can do that from the from the. Um, from the uh, top right corner of your screen, but Cynthia is a is part of the volunteer staff. So I mean, I think that's a safe bet, and she's also doing some really really important work, as all of you are, but really unique and important work. So, um, <laughs> oh boy, I'm going out on a limb here. There she is. Okay, I'm going to unmute you. Are we good? <laughs> yeah. So, well, thank you for, um, for doing this. I'm really excited to hear from everyone and what everyone is up to and, and what they're doing uh, to bring positive change to the world. And it's just been such a delight and pleasure to get to know Sandy through the charter uh, and just to see her kind of just blossom and explode all over the world. And I've been really learning so much from my peers at the charter in terms of how to really you know, be bold and just step out there and, and show up and just do what's on your heart. So it's been some great opportunities um, just being involved there. So in fact, um, this week, we, I've just participated in the um, Global Peace Wave Summit with John Raymer and the Compassion Games, and um, just really amazed with what he's doing. It seems like everybody's kind of going quantum. You know, they start here and then they're gone. They're, they're <laughs> circling the earth, you know, at the speed of light. So, um, so yeah, I'm doing a talk today. It's, it's um, on accelerating planetary steward stewardship through conscious media. So if you're on Facebook at 3 o'clock, be sure to tune in to my, um, my talk. I'm really excited about it. So a little bit of background on, on me. Um, I founded Compathos, an arts and media nonprofit, uh, about nine years ago. And we've created various types of award-winning media, films, music, interactive, student media, long-form journalism, music videos, <laughs> film festivals, and a globally recognized media hub. So I've had the opportunity to work with a, a creative community of talented students, Hollywood professionals, entrepreneurs, and student impact artists, I mean social impact artists, and movement uh, builders on campaigns around the world. So um, it's been a really amazing journey. And so we've uh, been focusing mainly on transformation through systems, storytelling, and impact. And we are creating peace and sustainable impact by initiating wisdom circles, me media incubators, and I'm trying to get this uh, media coalition for peace and compassion launched uh, through the charter. So a um, lot going on. Last year, we uh, launched Fills for the Planet, the best in um, environmental, social action, and transformational films on demand. And we create online hosted film conversations for networked organizations um, and are forging strong alliances with leaders from diverse uh, sectors. 
So uh, we're creating a catalog of films right now and VR films aligned with the SDGs for educators wishing to teach the goals uh, and uh, communities wishing to implement them. So most of our films have community discussion guidelines and educational curriculums. So our logo and symbol contains the butterfly and the butterfly metaphor um, is really significant um, and we're really um, starting to see how you know the smallest action has ripple effects can have ripple effects all over the planet so that's like the butterfly effect and also uh, the imaginal cells the the metaphor signifies that a new breed of dreamers are awakening so they're not only observers but creators and they get involved in the transformational process and their personal transformation also plays out as social transformation. So, wow. uh, so I'm calling um, this metaphor is the imaginal cells metaphor, where people are literally imagining a way, a new way of being, and a new way of being on the planet right now. So. Um, as Buckminster Fuller said, you never change things by fighting the existing reality, but you, uh, you totally, to change it, you totally um, build a new model that makes the existing obsolete. So, um, yeah, so the- so much we've gotten a few, I don't mean to interrupt, well, let me interrupt you because I'm ringing the bell. I don't know if you can- Oh, me. the bell, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, because you, I, every single one of you can fill up this call, because you're all doing extraordinary work. So we don't want to discount that. But but we're getting some questions. People want to know what's the name of your nonprofit again because that you went by that a little quick. Sure. Okay. So drop that in the chat window so we can all find it too. And, okay. and is your name Thea? I yes. Thought, oh, okay. Thea. I refer to as Cynthia. I, oh, okay. I, 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 I thought I heard a different name. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So I can put that in the chat window and. Um, and go from there. <laughs> yes, that'd be that'd be wonderful. And and um, like Sandy said, we're excited to hear everybody. And and it there's just so much with what you said. I really um, honor the work that you're doing. And and um, let's figure out how as we grow, we're you know we're going to be interweaving and collaborating. So it's exciting. Thank you so much Thank for, you. Um, for Thank sharing. You. <laughs> You. Okay, and now I'm going to, I think another safe bet, um, and this partner is, oh my gosh, uh, hold on to your seats, or if you're driving, pull over to the side of the road, because this will be <laughs> full of energy, because you may not, you may just drive yourself right off the road if you're calling in. Um, Karen Palmer, I'm going to pull in. I, I'm going to warn you, you're going to be on camera, so um, in the event that you're not camera ready, you may turn your camera off, but here you go, everybody. Um, there she is. I'm going to unmute you. Uh -huh. Good morning, everybody. And I don't even know which organization to start with. <laughs> Where do we um, go with this? <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to be here with you. Thank you. You both are such inspirations to me. I'm so incredibly grateful to be with you both and with everyone who's on the call here. Um, I am so excited. I'm actually the founder of Global Kindness Revolution and Global Kindness TV and one of the national kindness leaders here in the United States. Um, we are reaching out to over 40 million social media reach using all of our social media in combination. Um, I've been part of the Charter for Compassion and the Compassion Games since really the beginning. I mean, it, we kind of grew together so beautifully. Um, and basically what I do is I work with children. I'm a singer and a songwriter, and I create musical coloring books that are to empower children and families to sing together, to do charitable acts together, and to um, see the possibility of being mindful together. And so um, I'm called Mindful Media Mom because I use all social media to raise the levels of compassion, gratitude, joy, love, kindness, and peace on earth. So um, <laughs> really excited. I, I have several different t online talk shows that I do. Um, and everyone is welcome. Just reach out to me. Let me know. Anybody who's part of the charter is welcome to connect with me and be a guest on my shows. We have an incredible social media reach. Um, we have a beautiful global family. 
I've been able to work with some of the most incredible nonprofit organizations and really co-create the experience of unity consciousness. I am like living in the, the vision of unity consciousness right now. And um, just every day I wake up just so incredibly grateful to see what, what we are, what we're co-creating here. It's just, I'm, I'm a big part of the peace wave. Um, I helped with all the social media. We just reached 2.3 million people with the thunderclap, <laughs> which is so exciting. And really, um, you know, we're, we're finding all of the ways to use technology for a greater good. I really believe that Divine Mother is guiding this beautiful, beautiful energy. And of course, Divine Father in balance. But Divine Mother has really stepped in here to teach us about collaboration, to teach us about the, the wonders of how we can work together and accomplish twice as much. And I've just been witnessing it everywhere. And I'm just incredibly grateful to be a part of this awakening. We're waking up, each and every one of us, in our own time-space reality, that most of us are finding each other and realizing that we're in divine assignment, that we are all one. We are this global family. And, you know, all of these contrasting experiences that are happening, you know, to bring families together again, is it's all coming up to be transmuted into the love that we really are. We have to heal it. We have to feel it to heal it. We have to really feel our emotions. We have to really feel the compassion for these people who are struggling and feel displaced and feel um, left out. We have to bring everybody in or we're not gonna get the, the real reason why we're here on the planet. <laughs> And that's part of the um, the SDG eighteen, the the plus one, and um, as if we honor self reflection and what that does and how that evolves us, then that um, allows us to take empathy to another level through compassion into an action state. So I, I love what you're saying, and, and I definitely want to talk with you about um, being able to spread the word what we're doing here in Sacramento. Yeah. Hashtag and compassion and kindness in action. Yay. <laughs> we use hashtags for awakening. We use the hashtags. I teach people how to use social media, how to use hashtags, how to use thunderclap, how to use all of the tools and the technology to amplify your message. I really believe every one of us is part of this beautiful jigsaw puzzle. And every person has an incredible message to share, a message that is important and needs to be heard. And I think that it's so important that when we have the tools to help somebody, we help them. Yeah. Yeah, you can thank just you. Just describe the charter for compassion <laughs> to me. It's just this constellation, just this container where we all can meet the pool we can all swim in and support one another and and be better together and I'm I I'm so grateful and yeah, Elaine Colbert's we are everyone. <laughs> really beautiful. She's just going crazy here on the chat window. Um and so um what I'd like to do is invite you to put in how the best way to contact you is in the chat window. Oh, sure. And thank you so much. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you for, for creating this container. And thank you for making this pool of endless possibility that we can all swim together in. It's really an <laughs> awesome place to be. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's where we remove the concept of competition to collaboration and cooperation. Oh, there is no competition. That was all an illusion. It is. You know, the only thing that really needs healing on our planet is the illusion that we're separate from each other. We're all in this together. Right. And we're 
and that's the beauty of acknowledging the inner masculine, yeah. the inner divine masculine and divine feminine that when they come into a place of, of union, then we're really in a place of wholeness of our divine selves. So I, I completely agree with you. This is really exciting. Um, you know, I loved all of the broadcasts that you did, Joan Marie, with um, the Golden Rule Day. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge you because I was so inspired. I'm actually working on writing an assembly and a musical that's going to go into the schools for Golden Rule Day for next year. So oh my God, I'm going to be getting in touch with you and with Sandy and with everyone at the charter because we're going to create a beautiful, beautiful catalog of kindness and compassion that's going to be kind of like um, a vending machine for schools of kindness and compassion and for the the workshops that we offer so that we can bring that to the schools and to the communities and work together to create more compassionate communities i would definitely like to talk with you because i i've created um cultivating kindness cards so i'd Yay! love to Yay. More about that, so. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Well, I will be in touch with you. So please let me know the best way to contact you too. Yes. I'm, I'm put in how you can contact me. Great. And, Thank uh, you, Karen. I'll put my direct um, email so that okay. you guys can directly contact me. But my website, if you want to learn more or you want to contact me through, it's globalkindnesstv.org. And you can just hit the contact button and I am my own um, VA, so I do all my own technology, so I always answer all my own emails. Okay. I'm going to give you my private email so that you guys can contact me directly. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much, Karen. And don't forget to put all that at the bottom in the chat window. I mean, um, yep. and everybody will get a copy of that. Um, this is a really great opportunity to demonstrate the value. I'm going to, what we're going to be doing in a second, folks, um, we're moving our, and, and um, Joan and I haven't talked about this, but we do do this after party concept where after the initial call, we bring everybody into the call. It's an after party. It's coming into the room together. We're going to do that um, after we wanted to hear from some of you um, who are willing to share with us on camera. And then we're going to just bring you all in. So what about moving our after party up a little bit, Joan? To bring Absolutely. Screen. Um, and that, that's what we'll all be working on in the background. Um, let me at the same time take the second um, to share with you the um, a benefit of the Charter uh, for Compassion Network. And that is Karen mentioned what she's doing with Golden Rule Day. Just by sharing this information has just multiplied the impact possibly for Karen because perhaps she doesn't know that we are partners also with the Golden Rule Project or people. And URI, right? URI also part of the United Religions Initiative. And we are collaborating largely with them um, at the Parliament of the World's Religions coming up in, in Toronto in November. Um, I think we have a couple, Marla and Kasha as, are calling in from Toronto and hopefully you ladies will be there um, at the Parliament. And if you're not, reach out and, or go to parliamentforworldreligions.org. Um, again, that'll go out to you and register and join us um, and then let us know you're gonna be there so we can plan on meeting you. Um, but at any rate, so the so to so what can we do to weave our partners together um, to do better together? And perhaps they're going to bring more resources, or more connections, or more, um, you know, just more influence to what you're doing. Um, so thank you so much, and and yes, listening in everybody. And it's gonna we're gonna do this one at a time because Zoom doesn't make it that easy <laughs> and i'd love to share um when we have time too about what's happening in sacramento so hello and once again everybody if you don't want to be on camera just um go ahead and turn your cameras off at the bottom of your screen but in you come gracia should we we want to hear from everybody we're about all these beautiful ladies i know oh, isn't this yeah. awesome <laughs> seen anything yet <laughs> i mean you have you've seen everything that's not come out the way i intended so awesome but. i love it uh -huh. and see how powerful we are we're more we're brighter together we're lighter together and everything is so much easier and stronger together our voices get louder and more amplified and and really it's amazing when 
beautiful, beautiful women come together. And of course, we empower the girls, the children. That is the most exciting. I didn't even get to tell you about what I'm doing with that. That's a really exciting thing, too. Well, we're going to have to have a special call for, for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I'd love to interview you, Karen. Yes, I'd love to interview you guys, too. Absolutely. Yes. Well, I go around. I, I do. Since we're already at 830. So yeah. I want to um, stay with the two to three minute calls, Sandra. Perfect. So if you can... Yeah. Find that I, yes, and, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I'm not being a very good timekeeper because I'm just way <laughs> too nice. But. I know there's just we could do this with with each one of you. So, um, is it Bracia? Is that how you? Oh, she's. Um, can you un unmute? Oh, to unmute, you're automatically muted. So, um, please at the bottom of your screen, you have a mute button, far left hand corner. It's yeah. a little microphone. Unmute oh, yeah. yourself. Um, and. How do you how do you pronounce your name? Oh no, she's still. I'm not hearing her, Sandy. I'm unmuted. Oh, there you go. There okay. you go. Well, good morning, everybody. Good um, morning. So delighted to be here. I I just feel like I'm bathing in the pool of everything that you've done and said so far has been so resonant and beautiful. Um, and I've also absolutely loved that both of you, Joan and Sandy, have used weaving metaphors um, because um, oh, you're a weaver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an artist and I'm the, the founder of the Women's Woven Voices Project. I'm also the art director for the Women's Equity Council for the United Nations Association in San Diego. And uh, if you can see behind me, this is a, a panel the, of the first uh, section of a 160 foot long tapestry mm -hmm. that is um, being created as a collaborative international art project. Um, and I'm just here today to invite people to participate. So Woven Voices um, is designed to empower women by writing, weaving, and sharing their stories. And the weaving part of it is, uh, is a very healing, meditative, uh, hands-on way of uh, embodying our strength, our creativity, and our courage, and our compassion, so that uh, so that when when uh, the tapestry is displayed, we have this incredible visual of the beauty and power of women united and stitched together as a global community. Um, and then, as an artist, I'm actually you might be able to see better if I do this. Um, I'm adding a red fringe to the bottom of three out of every four of the story cloths. So each one of those strips was woven by a different woman. Uh, and this represents seven different states and two different countries at this point, because I've just started the project. Um, but the red fringe is, is kind of a call to attention. Uh, the, the project came out of an international women's festival that I produced up in Washington last year. Uh, and just the subject of, um, of abuse and violence against women was very strong during that conference. So this art project, really the heart of it is, is to show the beauty, power, and compassion of women and how to apply that towards uh, a world that is full of respect and uh, mutual respect and compassion and to what, between men, women, and the planet. So, Beautiful. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Thank you. And so everyone is invited to participate. Um, it, there's a website, uh, you know, www.womenswovenvoices.com. Uh, and there you will see uh, all of the resources that you need to participate. There's videos and um, uh, information and you mail it to me and I stitch it together. And the goal is to have it at uh, the UN at 20, on, in, during 2020 mission on the status of women so that's the what um what is that the the goal is to have the the tapestry exhibited widely internationally but i my heart's desire is to have it uh, exhibited during the commission on the status of women uh in march of 2020 at the united nations okay we can make that happen oh good okay if that's you awesome. can't we can Okay, good. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And do drop in all those ways to contact you in the chat box um, okay. if you haven't already. Okay, Are you going to the parliament? I'm not this time, no. Okay. Oh, in 2020? No. Oh. Okay, <laughs> let's talk because how beautiful would it be to have that displayed? So 
it, it, I don't think it could happen, but let's talk about that. All right. Well, and again, just, I'm glad you brought that up. So by just sharing the project, I literally just started this a couple of months ago. So anybody who has any place that they think that this beautiful piece of artwork might call attention to our, their mission, I would love to hear from them. Okay. Thank you so much. Here, yeah. Sorry. Be sure and list your, um, your contact. Okay. Thank That's you so much. Thanks so much. Okay. Who's up next? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. What is your name? Um, I'm Angelique. I live in the Netherlands. Oh. I'm from the Netherlands, from Europe. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm really grateful for being here on this panel. It's lovely to see you all together and all these beautiful women, all these beautiful sisters from overseas. It's fantastic, really. I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, would you share with us what you're doing in the Netherlands? Yeah, yeah, I would. I, I would. I have, um, well, three minutes. <laughs> so, so I know. There's a lot to tell. <laughs> it's Reader's Digest version. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, I'll go off now. I'll do my best. Um, I first, I think it's really important to tell that I was at the Gathering for Humanity in May with uh, Grandmother Flor de Mayo. I've been there as a grandmother as well. I was not mentioned before, but I've been there as a grandmother in the panel. And it was such a wonderful experience. And what I love to share is that all together, really as one, men and women, there was such a beautiful, beautiful energy going on. And it was fantastic. So I, I trust in that. I really trust in that, that we can be as one and there is hope for us all in this beautiful world, this beautiful earth mother, which we are living on. I am, uh, to, to make it short, I am working as a, a shamanic practitioner. I give, um, I offering women's circles uh, for our years and years already. And what I'm doing now is that I, um, offer circles for women and make a bridge of light overseas to the United States to the group of Grandmother Flor de Mayo to connect and that we can pray together. So we are there in spirit all together and it's wonderful to do. We did it for a couple of times now and I think maybe because it's now um, back holidays that it's more difficult but we do that within in a month. I guess that there's another circle going on. So if anybody wants to join us please do because it's so important. We can have all these energies together and we can really connect and make circles of light over the whole world and that's what I really is that's my passion further I'm an artist and um, I create native art I work with feathers especially feathers and all uh, natural materials and my artworks are meant for healing um, there is now, um, well, to make a little uh, PR, it's important because it's also on Facebook. I make, um, I have an exposition going on just last, sun last Sunday, which is opened here in the Netherlands. And there's a series of artworks and you can find them on Facebook. And they are called Rite de Passage or Rites of Passage. And it's very important now because they can help people make their transitions into their wholeness and into their being to be, um, to connect more and more and to find their inner source and their inner strengths so that they can also um, be helped. My work is, is uh, created for supporting people to make transitions and to believe that they are all um, yeah worthy to be here and to make their own um uh, uh what you can say in english um everybody has his own thing which they which they can offer to the world and everybody has their own thing oh there's the bell already <laughs> <laughs> what i love to share is <laughs> my um my website of course and i put it on the chat it's way uh, nl because i live in the netherlands and i created a piece of work for the garden for humanity which is called being as one and if people want to know or want to see it or want to be in touch with it because it's for healing it's in the she center in galisteo um, um new mexico 
So Mexico. Okay, great. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Angela. Yes. Oh, thank it's you so, so much. It's so exciting. All these amazing Thanks. people. Thanks. And um, something that I want to mention too is for everyone, um, if if you choose to go on Facebook, go on to V2020, and it has you know our our. Um, uh, infinity sign logo there is another v2020 from england so we want to make sure you're on the right one and um and join us so when you have an event going on or anything like that that we're really building our community and um letting everybody know the great works that you're doing so thank you angelique thank you so much thank you both i'm really really grateful and i'm so delighted and yeah, what you call it? It's it's exciting. It's a really exciting, <laughs> it's exciting. going on. Thank and you. Angelique is always a regular on our grandmother Florida Mayo calls yeah. that I host or was hosting yeah. on the day of each. So you yes. can also see those on our our website, which we'll also make sure you get. Um, yeah. Let's can we call? Oh, thank you, Angelique, and it's good to see you. Thank you, thank you, Sandy. Um, and Thanks. Sarah is uh, one of she uh, not such a new partner, but boy, she's on like. Whew, she showed up like Mother Nature herself um, at the charter when she joined us as a partner. Um, and she would, would have her hand raised to speak. I hope oh, I unmuted you and you muted you. What was her name? Sarah. 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 Am I unmuted now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. Hi, Sarah. Me? Hi. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm so yeah, excited. I, it's hard to contain the excitement when you're <laughs> just on camera and you're muted. It's like, it's like, you can't <laughs> anyway, I think we're all, all feeling the vibration here. So, um, so yes, I joined, uh, I've been a member of the charter since 2013 when I first got to know about it, but I became officially with my uh, enterprise, a partner, when was it, Sandy? Well, it was this year that I, you know, registered the company in, as a partner. Um, year. Following, following silently since 2013 and, you know, waiting for the courage to actually say, hey, I'm going to become a partner. Uh, I am um, the founder of Compassion First. So that's a social enterprise. Uh, we're working to, right now it's just me and my daughters and it's a great start because yeah it's three gen almost three generations i have a 21 year old and a nine year old so the nine year old is fully on board just as much as the 21 year old and i love it oh, uh, great awesome. ideas from children uh, in this whole compassion field um we are so what we're doing um, I've, I've i've signed on to a lot of things uh, so i'm a member of the charter i've also um oh my god how am i going to say this so the parliament of the world religions i am going to be there i've sent it i've submitted a proposal and it got accepted we're going to uh weave speaking of weaving um we're going to weave milk bag milk bag mats and i'll show you what they look like so it's called the title of the session is called women weaving sisterhood and peace so in Canada we have we get milk in in milk in plastic bags, and this is a way to upcycle them and save them from going into the landfill. So what we do is we make uh, sleeping mats and handbags, a crocheted. Wow! Um, I do this uh, with a the lady who founded this initiative. Her name is Angela. She will be the co-presenter co in November at the ch at the Parliament. Um, and this has become basically a vehicle for me to create communities of women that come together, and we have healing conversations there, and they go away with a helper's high. It started off as just doing something exciting, but it's become bigger than what I really imagined it to be. Uh, it's, for me, it's not just about, save, just about saving the landfills or the environment. What it has become is um, a way to connect with other women and for women to give them a chance to really see the impact they can make at a small level. So before we were talking, uh, I think it was who, Cynthia talked about the butterfly effect. And I've mentioned that to Sandy before. This is the work that I want to do, that what we do every day has a greater impact. So what we're doing today 
from every little location we're talking, we're gathering, we're all doing something to benefit, benefit, you know, the compassion, uh, the charter. I can see you have the bell. So let me just quickly see here what else. The, the 18th goal, uh, SDG, you know, plus one, that's really where compassion first comes in. So I've endorsed that. Uh, as soon as Sandy posted about it, it's 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 we've signed on and are promoting that. The the self awareness and personal responsibility is really where compassion first comes in. Our tagline is a better world starts with me. So that's really um, that's really the core area where we work uh, through the lens of compassion. Um, I'll I'll stop there because I could go on with with other things, but I will be at the at the um, Parliament in November, so I'm excited to meet uh, Joan and Sandy, yes. and I don't know who else is going to be there, but yeah. Brenda, uh, um, Brenda Gustin will be too, and, and I'm sure some of the people from Toronto. Um, I'm, I'm so excited with what you're sharing, Sarah, and, and um, when I talked with Sandy about the plus one, we really we really feel so deeply connected to it because we feel that adding this one element is what will make the other 17 really work. Yes. That, um, we have to work from the inside out to be really effective. And, um, and so it's really exciting that you're doing this. Um, yay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Joan, may I um, suggest Please. then, since SCG18 is a partner, and before I know next step is um, Brenda, it looks like, um, but before we move on, and since we're on the subject, and since SDG has been come up, has come up a number of times, and Sarah, thank you so much. I'm so happy to actually see you in 3D, um, and I can't wait to hug you at the Parliament, um, and thank you for sharing all of that. It's remarkable. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to stand on that. I just wanted to make sure that was said. But um, the SCG 18 came out of actually one of our, out of our reaction to response calls, which is the first of a series of webinar series, um, which V2020 has taken and reshaped and called V2020. But before V2020, it was reaction to response, which was actually a um, a reaction to the presidential election in the United States where there was such a sense of disempowerment and fear and outrage from so much of our community that we were meeting on calls and after we got through the emptying out process after we had gotten to the place where we'd like okay wait let's remember who we are and what we're here to do and shoulders back take a breath let's face the same direction and work towards this we started this series, and one of our callers was uh, Bob Zuber. He actually happens to be at a U. He's a, a UN, um, an office at the UN on ending global conflict, and um, and he mentioned that um, good policy is made by good people. In other words, until we accept our responsibility and self advocacy, I mean that's not what he said, but that's what I heard. Um, that we are not going to accomplish any one of the goals, which by the, within an hour, this um, image was created um, for um, the immediated goal to suggest an 18 sustainable development goal. And if any of you know the UN system, it really is simply a campaign. It is not an official goal. Um, and it's that. It's just to finally stop and recognize who we are um, individually. We have to stop waiting for somebody else to solve the problems of any one of these individual goals. If you don't know what the sustainable development goals are to begin with, I recommend you um, come to this website and follow the link to that um, to really understand what these goals are. In each one of these goals set out by the United Nations on all of its member states, which are countries that are part of the UN, there is a series of targets. So one goal is a world of issue. And so, they all have a number of targets to address how to how to make impact on these goals and achieve these goals by the year 2030. By 2030, there are sure to be another series of goals because this is the second series of goals. And let's hope that let's all visualize that 18 will be included in that goal series. Well, and you know, for me, even if it's not officially um, put in, if we all follow the path. Um, through Compassionate Women and Girls, 
with this concept of 18. I know when, when I was doing the uh, Day of Peace events, it became really clear to me that I had to um, really humble myself to look at where I was at war inside myself. And that um, I think that that's a really important thing, that the more we make peace within ourselves, then the more um, we start integrating the concepts of compassion within ourselves and then we become the change that we want to see in the world. So I think that that's a really important um, Im important guide for us. So, um, so thank you, Sandy, for doing that. Do we have anybody else that wants to um, wants to talk? Brenda has her hand raised. Yay. Okay, Brenda. Good morning. Good afternoon. Evening. <laughs> so I'm here in California. Hi there. I see all these friends here and people around the world. It's lovely to see you. Um, uh, there's so much. So in Northern California, um, many years ago, I started by freeing children, basically um, uh, got involved in the global movement. Um, and now there's over 30 schools um, in the uh, world that are all about educational freedom. And so Karen, I'm really um, loving to hear what you have happening. Um, I've come around full circle now back into uh, working with California Visions uh, Shift Network and on the education panel with all of them bringing educators in and all the things that we're doing. And then Joan and I have done installation of peace poles at schools because of Renee Marie. And, you know, it's just all this. And I honestly never realized how much I just live for freedom and peace. I just kept following what's the next step. And um, I did a big prayer years ago, and then Dr. Ellie Drake came into my email. I always ask for everything to come into my email or come to me. And so I became involved in Braveheart, and there's some of the women here um, on our call that are with Braveheart. And as I felt the call to work with adults um, and move out of working with children, uh, in 2009, I went into healing work, and then uh, Braveheart came into my life. And Braveheart, um, what we're doing globally is helping women to come together and come into their body conscious and uh, let go of trauma and fear and really step into their voice, which is the womb, the woman of who we are, and many of us know this. Um, Joan, my dear friend, has, you know, ushered me into, you know, we've done the Day of Peace for all those years, and I supported her there, women here that, with a foundation that I um, had been involved in. Um, we've now morphed ourselves, Mercy Springs Foundation, into Chill Sacramento. So, and then Joan and Laura Hansen and others are working on a level where the mayor has uh, agreed that Sacramento is now um, a compassionate city. So of course, um, Sandy um, being, you know, our director here in California, uh, it's just so wonderful. And then Sandy kept telling us, let's go to the parliament, let's go to the parliament. So I called Joan at the last minute because Sushila here on the call had tickets. And so I said, let's do it, having no idea why. Um, and that's all we pennies <laughs> <laughs> and just never knowing why yet being called to step up and it began with the school years ago I just had to do it, it there was this impulse in me so how do we burst forth as JG here in town says to do and um, and so we're gonna be at the Parliament um, like you Sarah we have a couple of um, applications that were approved. We'll be doing, um, I'm working with Namrata in Mumbai. Uh, she really gave me a great example of what to do with the charter here for myself and to how Joan and all of us beautiful women here can bring to light the, the work that's being done on the ground floor from women who are not necessarily recognized. There's a lot of global um, work that is out there that is seen. And like Karen, you were saying, how, to, how do we amplify it with um, 
um, technology. And a lot of people, we don't, we don't know how to do that, and we're learning how to do that and to work together and to collaborate. So in the parliament, we'll be working on <laughs> the sustainable goal number 18, which is what Braveheart works with, is the number nine and 11 and the sacred geometry. So you'll see here sacred geometry. This is the Sri Yantra. And so I work with that. Let me cut in, Brenda, because I want to um, I'll talk about how you're going to be talking. Um, we're going to be interviewing you next um, okay. on the next call. So I want to make sure we get everybody in since it's almost nine o'clock already. Okay. <laughs> so my last thing is just, you know, yeah. and then we'll be doing the wisdom of the voice there. But this, this sacred geometry is in us. And this is the representation of the 64 codons in our body. So we are amplifying these codons and that's all i have to say for now lovely to thank see you. every one of you here and i'm so happy have a lovely day night whatever you're in wherever you're at. <laughs> thank you brenda um what brenda was talking about in sacramento it's really exciting we've um and this is part of what we want to do too is around the globe we want to build an excitement about knowing that individuals um can start stirring the movement for compassionate cities that you don't um have to have a degree or a high place in um in the political system um i'm a massage therapist Therapist. <laughs> I teach conscious touch and I got involved in this um, in this piece work and um, the other co-founder Laura Hansen we did a compassionate capital region um, we didn't we made a conscious decision not to just do the word Sacramento because we wanted to include all of the area around it but we held the intention that if we focused on Sacramento becoming a compassionate city because that's the capital of our state of California that we had an opportunity to energetically start correct, um, creating a ripple effect where it would create an opening um, for more cities to easily become um, compassionate cities and get on board because the capital is. Even though um, the capitals in the states of the United States are not always um, the largest populated or the most well-known. A lot of people say San Francisco and LA are the, the towns that matter in Sacramento, but we're holding the power here that um, Sacramento is the city of the sacrament and that um, Sacramento has this incredible opportunity right now to really step forward as a leader so it took um, um this july it'll be a year since we actually got the compassionate city to pass through the city council and our mayor so it we're really learning the process of patience and divine timing so this is that inner that 18th um, aspect within ourselves and that yantra like um, Brenda was saying that that sacredness within us that speaks that inner voice of guidance that we know to be true even though the outside um, things may not be agreeing with us at that moment so um, literally on May 1st of this year spirit woke me up and said you are speaking today at the city council meeting and it was like oh my god but thank god it's only two minutes and so um we i raised the awareness again that it's been almost a year it's time that we start um they approved it and that it's time um once they approve it that's when the work really starts right so we do the work to get it to happen and then we have another whole place of work so we're super excited now because we've been meeting with the city and um, we have a budget and we're doing um, a weekend of um, September 15th is going to be a day of action of doing service and then Sunday is going to be um, a day of celebration kind of like a block party we have eight districts in Sacramento. And um, so each district, we're, we're working more on a ground, on a root level. So we're gonna focus on eight separate events happening. Uh, so each district, 
focuses on um, what they feel is important for their district. And so they're gonna do community work on the 15th, and then on the 16th, we're gonna have a block party that um, pulls in uh, vendors from that area, musicians, spoken word, and um, have conversation about what compassion means to them, how we can continue compassion in action on. So we're super excited on um, what this means, um, but it's it's work, but it's good work, you know? So, so thank you. Who else do we have? Um, it's it's 901, so we have a couple options. We can have one person um, talk and share what they're doing, or we can open up the conversation. We will stop at um, about 925, so I can share with you about um, Brenda's call next month. And um, so, what do you guys want to do? By the way, that while you're raising your hand and talking about what you want to do and we've got to hear from beverly hill and there's linda ragsdale so we're going to open it up okay yeah. um, so maybe sandy have, just really have, watching the um time yeah i that'd be want to point out just i just noticed this there are actually two pages of us here so if you want to see everyone's face on the right yes hand, yes you can actually see one of two or two of two a little arrow just float your mouse about the middle of the screen on the spine so i just wanted to mention that so everybody can see everybody because there's oh, so many of us, right. we can't fit on one screen. That's all I'm okay, who's up? I'd like to speak, unless uh, someone else wants to. No, Beverly, to that's, that's great. Go ahead, Beverly. Okay. Um, I founded an organization called the Gender Side Awareness Project uh, in Dallas, Texas. Gender Side means um, female genocide. And our group has two objectives. The first is to raise awareness about the 126 million females, women and girls who are missing from the world population as a result of social causes, not natural causes. Um, uh, that works out to be 3.7% of the female population that is demographically missing um, this is a genocide of types on par with the genocide of the Native Americans, and yet very few people are aware of this. Uh, so our first goal is to raise awareness. Our second is to take action in a practical, tangible way. Um, right now, we do that by educating at-risk girls in developing countries because we believe that... Um, Educating girls is the best long-term solution to this problem. But back to the awareness part, we will be at the Parliament of the World's Religions, and um, we have, we're doing a presentation. Um, we have, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we have applied to install this art exhibit that you see. It is a floor-to-ceiling maze of baby booties where each pair of baby booties represents 10,000, not 1,000, but 10,000 missing women and girls in the world. Oh it fills 2,000 square feet. And um, we, uh, we have applied to set it up in the convention center somewhere in Toronto. We still have not gotten approval for it, um, but um, it is going to the United Nations. I, we don't have final approval there, but I'd say 95% chance at the very end of November. And um, we'd like for it to go to Toronto at the very beginning. Um, anyway, uh, so I, I have a very specific request. Um, we will, if this is approved, and I hope to know very, very soon, because we've got to know soon if we're going to do this. Um, if it's approved, we need volunteers before the parliament and after the parliament to help us set it up and take it down. It actually takes, requires eight days. To, I mean, um, three, two to three days, probably two, to set up if we have a full team of eight people and about a day and a half to take it down. So I heard that um, two of you are from Toronto and I wondered if there would be any possibility for um, recruiting some, you know, lining up some help 
with the exhibit set up and take down. There will be a couple people from our group going, but um, a lot of them just can't afford to fly to Toronto um, for this event. I'll put it out to our ambassadors and all that will be there and also our leadership, whoever we in our network who will be there. I will be there on the 30th, um, the evening of the 30th. So you can count on me for some time. I'll also be setting some stuff up. I'm in. Yeah, I'm sure. So. I'm not, not going to be there, Beverly, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll do a, a special show with you and you can come on and ask for help because we have some people in Toronto that may volunteer also. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, we have, we have a, like a big global family and a lot of people who watch my show called Mindful Families. So mm -hmm. um, I think that there's about three people I just thought off by the top of my head that, um, that we can try to reach for you. Thank you so much. So this would be kind of, this would be before and after the convention. So probably October 29, 30, 31, you know, right around Halloween and then um, November eight and nine. So thank you so much, appreciate that. Thank you, Beverly. And thank you, Karen, for offering that. That's awesome. Yes, thank you. So do we have anyone else that would like to speak? Judy, um, can you unmute? There you go. Hi, everybody. Um, I just want to hear more from everybody else. I just wanted to um, share my gratitude for being sitting in this chair with each of you for true. Um, my heart is expanded. Um, I'm a good friend of Joan and Brenda, and we do some work here in Sacramento. Um, I woke up this morning and it was, um, I actually felt a breath come through me like, if maybe we could all take that breath right now because it brings me to tears, nice deep breath. And I just felt the breath come out of me and it said, God, goddess, God breathes you in. And it was like I woke up in the breath of source itself bringing me into this day. And um, I thought it was eight o'clock and I jumped up. <laughs> I said, Joan will kill me if I'm not on the call now. <laughs> no, but, um, and, and it was 5.45 actually this morning. <laughs> so I woke up to the sunrise with that, with, with actually being reminded that um, we are breathed by source itself and sitting, listening to each one of you. Um, my heart is so, so grateful. Um, you know, all of us doing our own work wherever we are, obviously having embodied knowing that we would see the reality built on separation and greed and everything dissipate before our eyes as we co-create heaven on earth, as we enter into this vibration. So real quick, I'll just say that for, for me here in Sacramento, so I can connect, there's a bunch of you that I'd like to connect with. Uh, Joan and I and Brenda and other people here did the Children of uh, the New Earth Conference years ago, and I know that's going to come alive again. We did one in Alberta, Canada, and we did... Uh, here in Sacramento. Um, and then like Brenda, I kind of went into working with women or adults, mostly women with freeing our God dance classes, it's called. And then uh, I'll be doing, and I do retreats. I'll be doing a retreat called Harvesting Our Wholeness in Mount Shasta. And then we do monthly atmospheres of awakening. So we bring people in like all of you and we do things together. So that's going to be happening more and more in Sacramento. I asked Joan how, what would I do if I got involved in Compassionate Women and Girls? And now I'm seeing <laughs> just that we get to collaborate and we get to be the breath of source itself coming into the world. I have here a practice called Sacred Art of Sound. And what I'm seeing is I'm attracting a lot of youth and young adults that are, you know, a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression, some suicidal stuff. Of course, um, their vibration is being challenged with the vibration of the other uh, unraveling of the reality that they could never have possibly participated in fully. So um, sound is phenomenal with them, phenomenal. So I see the bell going. So anyway, let's just keep doing what we're doing. What, uh, what did I want to say so much? Oh, there's also for young people, soul nourishment sessions, which we do with mothers and calling the souls of their children. So there's a lot going on and I'd wanna connect with all of you. And um, I'm just excited to be the breath of source itself with all of you and see this new reality co-created. So thank you and namaste. 
Thank you, Judy. Can I it's, just say how uncomfortable it is to have to ask a woman not to continue? <laughs> no, it's not easy with the bell, bell, is it? <laughs> not here, especially. Even with the gentle bell. <laughs> um, I, and I don't know what you can hear either. If I do it again louder, it's not to, it's just because I'm not sure if it's translating. No, I think you, yeah, you can it. hear it. Thank you. you know, yeah, it's beautiful. It's Three minutes goes fast. Linda Ragsdale had her had her microphone undone, and I we can see her now on screen. And I just want you all to know that's not a light behind her; that's her halo. So, <laughs> and me up here too. Who was, oh, Linda's on. Okay. Yeah. So I just I wanted to say too I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying every moment of hearing everyone's mission. Um, this year for me is incredibly powerful. Uh, I am a survivor of the 2008 Mumbai terrorist attack. I was in the restaurant and um, only one of five people who survived. And the question whenever we go through something like this is um, not so much what what has happened, but what do we take forth into the world? Um, from a room that came in filled with um, children carrying guns of hatred uh, created by the illusion of our separations, um, I started an organization called the Peace Dragon based upon the unfulfilled request of the young 13-year-old girl sitting next to me um, that evening at dinner. Um, so I teach peace around the world. I use what's called the three piece code and it fits entirely with everyone's section of, of what they're doing and it starts exactly within ourselves. Um, the code asks you to see yourself with love and see the world with love. It asks you to speak to yourself with love and speak to the world with love and make choices connected to that heart, knowing that we have all the these options and all these directions to go. Um, five years within starting the organization, um, this great challenge for me was how can you hold your peace when the terrorist doesn't come from outside but comes from within? Yeah. I am a stage three breast cancer survivor and immediately started speaking and teaching differences through all of the things that may challenge us and freeze us out from making compassionate decisions. So I use one symbol, three stories, and three activities that help us come to fully experience this. And I do this from pre-K four all the way through adults. You're showing part of the, the Peace Dragon website and I have to say, um, I am learning so much through a more tragic uh, experience in, in my life. Um, my husband, I'm gonna cry a little, is uh, stage four esophageal and in the stage of crossing wow. into a, a different form of life that we so totally don't understand. But the gift of this experience is understanding what our heart holds on to and when we let go. So I never will lose anything I am only given. And so I let go of jealousy, of anger, of hatred. And what I keep are the treasures of my heart. When we speak, I teach immediately. So when we talk about this 18th, this, the jewels of our heart, the six things that we need to start off by teaching and what I teach at the earliest of ages is that you matter, that you are the first you and you define you, that you are human and in the word imperfect and imperfection, I'm perfection that you have the power. Everything starts and stops with you. And that is an amazing power. And that you have this passion. And the key to our challenge is holding this passion to warm others to create the changes in this world. And in this experience, we are the artists. And the greatest power of our artistry is that we have created this whole world, but the greater power is to recreate when we see the things that aren't working. And that is where we are, as coming together at these powerful feminine forces to say, let's empower this force of creation and recreation, because as women, that's what we hold within our spirits and soul. I am thrilled to say that the actual story, The Peace Dragon, written while I was recovering, I, my bullet wound is almost uh, three feet through my body. 
Um, the story is coming out this September. I am, I will post this on the V2020. I'm inviting everyone. I'm going to not go to sleep for the 20th and the 21st. I will be teaching children how to draw peace dragons because peace dragons come to the world empty handed and it has you connect with what is going on outside the world and the gifts within you and what you'll bring. I am also going and I'm going to put a wish out here. The book I would like to have read by a celebrity or the song that is written, it was written as a musical to go into schools as well. I'm looking for a celebrity reading because one of the things I want to do is create a mental health museum so that we as the world become mental health literate and that we have artists draw the peace dragons that indicate the experience of a patient and that it's supplemented by support of power and that people can go, the museum can travel, but an online museum will allow teachers for children to experience everything. And I heard the bell and I'm sorry, but I could talk about peace and love forever. <laughs> and there's a whole series of Peace Dragon books which gratefully have won awards and I hope will continue to win awards. And I'm thrilled to see that peace is taking it because peace is learning to balance those inside energies with the outside energies and knowing that we have the power to change those outside energies. So thank you, Sandy. Thank you all of you for letting me share my story. Yeah. Thank you, Linda, and, and bless you and bless your family. And, and I'm so glad that you survived and that it awakened this mission in you that you are sharing with so many. And um, I look forward to doing more research about Peace Dragon and um, thank you. And, and it, um, it reminds me about how as we, as we follow the plus 18 or the plus one SDG, that um, this awakens in us more of our mission of how we're bringing it into the world, which creates more of a ripple effect. Um, from just from doing the compassionate work, each of us are just multiplying tenfold, hundredfold within our cities um, and all over. Look what's happening now. We're connecting more globally um, here in Sacramento. In April, we're planning a symposium on compassionate living and dying that we want to bring awareness. You know, I'm part of the baby boomer generation, and we've we've seen how. Um, People that are transitioning are um, being way over medicated and they, um, we have a right to choose how we live and how we die. So it brings more of a personal accountability of what we want. And so, um, gosh, this is, this is incredible. It's 918. Thank you again, Linda. And did someone else want to speak? I would. Dean. Okay. I want to thank Brenda, first of all, for um, inviting me to be here today. I'm also in Sacramento. I'm a native here and I grew up and at the t at, I'm almost 60. And I always thought that Sac Sacramento was always known as a, like you said, the stepchild to San Francisco or Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> but um, in, in 2010, I had a friend die um, who took her own life. And I had an experience where I was able to, I got a message from her from the other side. And um, immediately the world opened up to me and I went on what I call an odyssey. And I've been on an odyssey ever since. And that led me to produce a live event for Dr. Oz, called, which I call Journey to Oz. And um, through this time, I've realized, and I've written a song called Carry Me that I wrote for the International Song of Peace Contest, and I'll post it on here, because it's, it's a song about how we can help each other, and it was inspired by how a mother or a parent will pick up their child no matter what their need is, and will carry them as long as they need to be carried. But sometimes as we get older, judgments come in, and we, we push people away, or we... we we cast judgments on people. So carry me is to acknowledge those that need to be helped and also those that do the, that do the helping. Um, uh, after the noetic experiences, I, those were, I found out those were scientifically, they were science. I was getting science and I'm a makeup artist. Already? 
<laughs> All right. I'll Don't just shoot the, Don't shoot the messenger. I think we have 24 hour long calls here. I <laughs> so this was, this is such a hard thing to do. So go ahead. One more minute, Jean. Okay. Um, so I just quickly, I want to recommend a couple sites for people to see and I'll post them. One is the Meru Foundation. Uh, Meru.org, MeruFoundation.org. Spell that, please. Spell it. M E R U. It's as of Mount Meru. Okay. Um, yeah. That's the, a physicist whose work, um, he did 40 years of research, which shows how all the world religions are really from one tree and that how our hands are our power, it's our divinity on the, in the world, um, and how we can shape the world through what we do. Um, the other is, since we're all women, um, a friend of mine who's an artist who introduced me to shamanistic practices has a video called I Am A Woman. And if you, Google, if you go to YouTube and look for I Am A Woman and um, Jane Rivar, I think you'll really enjoy this musical video that embraces women of all cultures around the world. And then finally, um, we wrote the song Carry Me Together and um, um, it came in second at the International Peace Convention in, um, in Ireland. So they've been doing the peace thing for 25 years there. Thank you. Oh Thank you. God. Drop all those on the chat. And Jean, you're in Sacramento, so we have to connect. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, um, we're at 921. Um, do we have someone else that would like to share? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Sheila's been raising Sheila, her. hello. Hi, I had a lot of challenges with technology this morning, but I'm so glad it finally worked. Um, yeah, so Brenda invited me in through Braveheart Women to be an ambassador, so I'm not exactly sure how I fit into Charter for Compassionate Cities, but I will share how what I'm doing or how what I've been doing this past year and one of them is um, I helped Marilyn Rosenbrock Nyborg, who is the founder of um, Gather the Women Global Matrix and Indiv Indivisible Women of Nevada County. Um, she wrote A Woman's Guide to Sacred Activism, How Do We Move Forward? And um, it's a, it's a short, short book, about 86 pages, but it has... I believe I've actually included the Compassionate Cities in the um, in the bibliography, so that's kind of cool. Um, but what is in here that is our sacred action is called uh, the Living Room Conversations that Joan Blade started, founder of Move On Org, and uh, I've been working with the Living Room Conversations for over a year. And this weekend, I actually took it to the National Organization of Women, and we did uh, a conversation on women in political leadership listening cafe. So um, when you mentioned the thing about um, your action on September 16th of having uh, conversations about um, what compassion means, I'd, I'd really be willing to bring a living room conversation around compassion and have people share, and uh, I, can, I can talk further about the details on that. So Sheila, but, uh, it's so nice to meet you, and I'm, I've known Kathy Schaaf for about 12 or 13 years, who's the founder of, co-founder of Gather the Women, will be at the parliament, um, carrying on a legacy, the alchemy event that happened at the last parliament. So if you're gonna be at the parliament, also let me know so when we find a bigger room, because <laughs> we're already in overflow mode, um, we're carrying on that alchemy, it's Alchemy of Women's um, Collective Power and Wisdom, which is a pre-parliament event the morning of Sarah's going to be there, Joan and Brenda will be there. So I just wanted to weave this connection, yeah. and I see Wonderful. you. Wonderful. And Sushila, I, and I don't see your name. I, I see Charter Women and Girls Under You, so what is your name? I'm Sandy Hart. I'm sorry, I just noticed Sandy that. Hart, okay. Here I go. Great. Yeah, I will be at the... Um, we do have a group going from Nevada City, so uh, yeah, I'll be at the Parliament. I did put in a, I'm, I'm on the waiting list to do a, a living room conversation. Uh, we didn't get chosen, but um, I'd love to just sit around and have some if there's any spare time. I know that Parliament is totally packed with activities. 
but I did sign up to come to the uh, women and girls uh, extra day at the beginning. Oh, you're there. So, okay, great. Okay, we'll yeah. see you at the. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And, great. And I'm, I'm sure. complete. And I'm complete. Uh, um, in in September in Sacramento um, at the Sheridan, there will be um, the three day conference of the California Vision 2020, and Joan Blades will be speaking. So I don't yeah, I I asked to uh, if they need a volunteer again. I can. I would love to Great. volunteer for that. Okay. I did want to say that in in developing the uh, listening conversations, I am uh, I developed a class on listening skills and i it's a free a free webinar and i'm going to be doing one on um uh july 19th well actually july 19th i'm having uh, a zoom call on money and values and then the other one i can put the date on where are we communicating after this any, on the Facebook page? Um, yeah, V2020 on the Facebook Okay, I, I just signed up for that. So I yeah. will put, I will have a free Zoom call for um, checking in on our listening bad habits and the skills that help listening improve. So let's, let me take your time to mention that, um, and we also have a, a women and girls Facebook page, which reaches a broader audience. So please... Even if you have to double dip, do that because we okay. want to get out there. Yeah, we really want to start weaving, just like um, you know, some of you have been called to weave together these these beautiful um, functional uh, products that are and works of art. That um, that's what we're trying to do too. Is we really want to figure out how we can connect with each other. So we only have three minutes left. Right. I um, I. I I just oh. have to say, I, there are two things I have to say before okay. the call ends, and I'm so sorry. The, and I know I talked a lot on this call. Um, it's what happens when I get with women. <laughs> we want to open up. Um, two things. First of all, yes, you've heard a lot about Sacramento. There's so much, it's such a great model of what's happening around the world, but Women and Girls is an international organization. Absolutely. And Brenda and Joan are the co directors of Compassionate. Charter for Compassion Women and Girls, and there are a number of women from that area. So they're a great model. So do zero in on what they're doing and as a model of what we can do. Another thing that we as, as creative geniuses tend to do is we stay in our lane with the work we're doing because it's so important. And one of the things we want to impress is consider the idea of getting out of our lane, looking around at what others are doing, and see how we can collaborate and work in cross-intersectionality, um, as well as share this stuff. So she loves to share with us what we're doing and we'll blast it out there. We're a network. Use us, leverage us. We reach hundreds of thousands of people with our outreach. Take advantage of us. This is it and it's free. That's all. I'm complete. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh, what an incredible call. I want to thank each of you for coming on and and I'm so excited. This is the beginning of is something more and and that really excites me and I'm I'm so honored and um, I've personally have done um, Magdalene work I've been called by um, Mary Magdalene for over 25 years and I'm an artist as well and um, so I, I encourage you, my, my website is CompassionCentral.us, U-S, and um, I'd love to connect. Um, I, we we want to thank um, Zoom for being our sponsor and giving us this platform to share our voices. And um, if, you, if any of you know someone that would like to be a sponsor or if you'd like to be a sponsor, you can go onto the V2020 page and learn more about that. We want to um, really keep building a momentum. And uh, next month, I really want to get this in. Next month, um, because I feel that um, as, as part of uh, building V2020, what one of the things we really want to acknowledge is that things that were sacred have been made profane and we are pulling the veil off of what has been made profane and making it sacred again. And so we really want to acknowledge this. And um, one of those things are the sacred ancient teachings that um, we, they resonate within us. When we hear it, we vibrate with it. And Brenda Gustin 
and Elaine Groman will um, will be speaking next month. It'll be Wednesday, August 22nd, and um, you can sign up um, and register, but they're going to be sharing their wisdom and knowing of sacred geometry and how this can guide each of us for more compassion in our lives and in the world. So I really hope you join us. Please sign on to Facebook. We can keep the conversation going on V2020's um, Facebook page. That's what it's for. And the Compassionate Women and Girls. It's let's let's keep this rolling. We've built this. Um, we've come together and created this incredible energy. So bless you all. Sandy wants to say one more thing. I'm sorry. Yes, we're right on the half hour, but we have a woman who's been trying to raise her hand. Oh. And if you think we can all hang out for a couple yes, more minutes. Yes, I, I will. <laughs> and then I've got one last plea at the end. And um, if that's okay, in the spirit of feminine leadership, let's stretch the boundaries, the possibilities, and um, disobey some of the rules. So, Mia. Hi, um, I'm sorry. I've been having some technical difficulties. So you are not able to see me. But I'm in Atlanta. I've worked with women in the Caribbean um, who have been sold into human trafficking. Can you all hear me? Yes. 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 So I've been I've been working here in Atlanta, trying to bridge the the gap with the migrant community, with those who have been displaced, the refugee, what we call refugee, and we are all refugee here on Earth. But um, I've been working with some women and girls who have been sold into human trafficking and forced labor, especially in the school system. And right now, um, we built three schools in Haiti and Jamaica. So right now, we are looking for some volunteers to work with us in the Atlanta area. Um, we have a lot of, um, we have a um, refugee, a sanctuary city called Clarkston. We have at least 2,000 children who have been separated from their parents oh my God. At, the, at the border. Um, I've been doing this all by myself, as Cindy know. Um, I, I am a partner. Um, I've been attending all the meetings, trying to meet with state officials, the mayor. As you know, next year, um, next year is going to be, the Super Bowl is going to be in Atlanta. So I've been trying i've been doing my best to see who i can connect with who you can talk to so you can get access to those businesses corporations um so you we can launch an initiative to to talk about human trafficking um at least here um in atlanta i've received a lot of calls but i don't have a way means to help them i've helped some but at least every day we receive at least uh, 60 to 65 calls on our hotlines. So um, I, I need volunteers. And that's what I've been trying because I've seen so many of you here. Um, I speak three languages. I speak French, Creole, Spanish, and um, also English because I was raised here in the States. But um, I am from Haiti and I was so happy to hear from, I guess, Linda. Linda Radsdale, I think um, she's the one who are with on stage breast cancer and also from Karen. And I'm so excited. I see your bell, Cindy. <laughs> so I'm just going to stop. Oh, but Mia. I am so excited, guys. I am so, so excited to see those beautiful faces. Well, <laughs> and thank Mia, thank you so much. I'd like to coordinate with you to um, interviewing you so we can understand more. I know that... Um, information has told us that Super Bowl can be one of the highest days of human trafficking. Yes. So, um, you know, as women we, and men, you know, we, we need, we, I think as we, as women become more empowered, that empowers men to step more fully into yes. what it means for them to truly be men. So, um, let's let's work together what an incredible thing to end on um Jean marie um uh, mia has actually um been interviewed by uh reaction, that reaction to response i, I remember in. you yeah. i remember you <laughs> yeah. in our chat window uh, yes i remember that call and i was so moved by you and I, I definitely want to talk with you more and, and we all want, um, I think that's a beautiful thing to, um, to close on 
is um, to take a moment in collective breath that we um, we breathe with those that are struggling for breath, the ones that are um, are in pain and are being hurt and um, feel very alone and isolated. We want them to um, to know that that love is surrounding them. So let's let's just take a moment. Do you want to ring the bell, Sandy? I do. We actually have a final piece to end at the end with. And Perfect. And I want Thank to make you. sure it kind of changes the dynamic. So let's do it. Let's just take a moment and then I'll do that. <sighs> Thank you all. Thank you all. If this call stirred anything into you, please consider a very small donation, even if it's a dollar. It helps us, it show, it's an exchange of energy. Um, it's the second uncomfortable thing I do on these calls besides asking you all to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> or stop talking myself. So thank you all. Just communicate, communicate. Open the lines of communication with us so we can better support you and give you more than three or four or five minutes to talk. So no. thank you, Joan, for holding this vision and for hosting this call. So very blessed am I. Thank you all. Beautiful. Let's, let's keep it going. Let's keep building. We're doing it. Thank you all for the work that you're doing. Bless you all. Bye.